Yes, good morning. Welcome to yoga practice. We are using this arc from winter to spring for a certain topic. We've been focusing on the yamas and the niyamas. And today our topic changes to the next niyama. So we just did a cycle on saucha and now we're gonna be talking about santosha, which means contentment. The niyama of contentment. Yesterday, if you were here for class, you saw that at the end of class, I had bindi on my stomach for Shavasana and I had Nakula under my arm for Shavasana and they are great representations of what Santosha can look like. The contentment of the cat that is purring and resting and like all is well for this creature in those moments, right? They have other expressions too, as you know, sometimes mischief, sometimes fear, sometimes they're whining, <laughs> sometimes they have craving, they want another treat, for example. But Santosha for us is a topic that we're going to dive into this week. So let's start with a comfortable, simple seat. Please come into your own sense of center and rest your hands in your lap. Close your eyes. Allow your breathing to help you locate yourself in the present moment. No matter what you've just come from, nor what lies ahead on this day, right here, right now, we have this place of refuge or solace, a, a place of sanctuary from whatever those things are. sit in the present, we may release ourselves from trying to investigate or make sense of the entirety of past. And we also don't try to plan the future or grapple with the, <clears throat> with the unknowns or the uncertainties. But in the present moment, we're practicing being here, as it were standing between past and future. We're arriving in the present. Practicing this present moment arriving here in yoga time, in yoga class, is really helpful for making it an option when you're scrolling in daily life, scrolling through the options of what to do in any one moment, that you could practice coming into the present. You've been able to notice over the last minute or so how well you're able to come into the present or where you might be challenged in doing that. And with awareness of that, the challenge or the ease, please bring your palms to your heart. We chant the Gayatri Mantra today. Om Arbhava Siva 
Patsavetor Varenyam Pargo de Vasyadi Mohi Diyoyana Prachodayata Om Bhargo Tatsavetor Varenyam Pargo de Vasyadi Mohi Diyoyana Prachodayata Om Bhargo Tatsavetor Varenyam Pargo de Vasyadi Mohi Diyoyana Prachodayata Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Bow your head to your heart. And release your hands and open your eyes. So when we look at the practice of yoga, there are many considerations and the teachings are uh, a delicate and also complex uh, pattern. It's like having a mandala of all these different parts. And the teachings on Santosha really encourage us to practice contentment in the here and now, to be content with what is which means that we're not right now, as we practice Santosha, mired in the past and trying to reconcile, resolve, or um, write our autobiography about all the things that <laughs> happened that were either good or bad. So we, we aren't trying to solve something from even an hour ago, a day ago, a week ago. We're also not right now trying to sort out the uncertainties of the unknowns of the future or um, grasp for something that we have future bound. When we're practicing santosha, we're really practicing contentment in the present moment. Now, the good news in this regard is that when you practice this santosha, this contentment, you will be less swung about by aversion and grasping. So by dvesha, aversion, resistance, reaction, um, that which you dislike, that which you hope doesn't happen, that which you do not want, <laughs> and craving, grasping, clinging, uh, wanting, wanting what you want. So you'll be less swung about by that pendulum and we'll also be less caught up in the larger pendulum of past and future. And the even better news is that once you've practiced, at the end of your practice, you can have a kind of lucid clarity about what's to come and where you've come from. And you'll be able to put wisdom into action. But if we're thrashing about trying to solve past and future before we get to the yoga mat, we're probably not addressing it from the most wise place in ourselves. We're probably addressing it from past impressions, habits, patterns, and behaviors with future fears and um, apprehensions. So we come to the practice, we become renewed. We find our place again in our wisdom and compassion and love, and then we can take action on what is ours to take action on. So, Right now, this is a refuge from anything outside of your practice. You are here. Okay. So we're going to do pranayama. And if your seat needs to be adjusted for pranayama, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to adjust mine now. I don't need it anyway, but yes, I've got a little foot warmer here. And you're a purring kind of foot warmer. You're a vibrating foot warmer. Hi. Okay, so we'll do the pranayamas of cleansing, the uh, kapha dosha. Let me remind you that there is a series coming up in April, starting on Thursdays, a four-week series on pranayama and meditation will happen each month. And April's focus is the kapha dosha, bringing that back into balance. 
It will also include yoga nidra and some other meditation techniques. So take your comfortable upright seat, please. And now coming to Vastrika, focus at the solar plexus. Now, inhale to suspension. Release the suspension in your own timing and exhale smoothly and completely, after which I'd like you to completely relax. Help us speak a little bit more briskly. Exhale. Inhale to suspension. Release in your own timing. Rest in the stillness of the present moment. Palabati with both nostrils. Inhale, inhale to suspend. Now smoothly and completely.
Bring the right hand up. So you're using Morgi Mudra. We'll talk more about why this mudra when we have the yoga therapy clinic on pranayama techniques. Uh, but please do your best to curl the first two fingers in. You'll be placing the thumb and the ring finger. We're going to do 30 left, 30 right, 20, 20, 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, down to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And that 1, 1, 1, you're going like this with, I mean, you're not, it's not this fast. You know, and it's not that much movement. It's very subtle. Um, but it, it reminds you of Shiva's drum when he goes like this with the drum and it has the tassels and it's making that sound. This is a cleansing technique, and I learned it from Mataji in Rishikesh, uh, who um, Ashley also knows who that is. So we're going back and forth because some of you have said that you don't do the one, 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 one very well. So we're going to do left 30, right 30, left 20, right 20, 10, 10, down to one, 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 like that. Let's begin. Which, which, on your own now. Inhale. Inhale to suspension. Inhale in your own timing. Please come to Vajrasana, come to kneeling. You come to kneeling, be prepared for lion's breath and also Korma Mudra. So for some of you in Korma Mudra, that means you're gonna have a block here to support your head. In lion's breath, we make the pause these are your fists, but they're your paws. We'll inhale through the nose. We're gonna exhale 
and spread the claws and also open the throat, stick the tongue out, make the eyes really big and make a hissing sound. And so, so like this, please inhale. Inhale. I smart. One more time. And then sitting quietly. Think of lion's breath. I think of Dorga, the goddess of um, removing things, the goddess of eradicating, the, the goddess of overcoming. So lion's breath. This comes to mind. Ali Dorga Namo Namo Ali Dorga Namo Namo Ali Dorge Namo Namo Ali Dorge Namo Namo Kali is also in there and she's the goddess of destroying things. So uh, they're very powerful goddesses and the lion's breath. <sighs> Every god and goddess has a vehicle that transports them. So Dorga has a lion. <laughs> okay, place your fists in your lower belly. We're going to inhale smoothly. Exhale, come forward. When your head is supported by something and the exhale is complete, you're going to totally relax and not inhale. It's a passive exhale suspension. We're relaxing the belly deeply and we're not inhaling. And I'm calling it passive because you're going to relax the belly and allow the exhale suspension to teach you what happens inside with the vacuum in the body. So let us inhale. And then exhale to come forward. Now to rise up in your own timing, of course, and then pause or proceed. So how long you're staying down in the exhale suspension is really a matter of your comfort level. You should feel calm, contented, santosha, relaxed there. This is something that you practice and get more and more accustomed to. So we exhale forward in your own timing and you hold the exhale out also for your own duration.
complete the next round, then you can come back up to sitting and just notice the echo after Korma Mudra. Please come up to standing. Take your jazz dance warm up pose as your stance. Now in this stance, let yourself get a little bit acclimated. You can go side to side. Enjoy. And what we're going to be doing is practicing, uh, these are spring cleansing techniques, and each of the practices that I've done with you so far is actually about cleansing, as is the next one. The practices are to help overcome the stagnation of the kapha dosha, and also to help the mind be less uh, burdened by the residue of dusty thoughts. So when you take the jazz dance pose now, let it get very still. Focus your attention on the breath and see if you can practice smoothly inhaling up to the inhale pause, smoothly exhaling into the exhale pause, and then smoothly inhaling again. And I want you to pay closer attention to the exhale. How do you get to the exhale pause and what is that like for you? What happens when you begin the inhale and how smooth can you make that process? Hope is that you can start sensing that during the exhale, you get closer and closer to the exhale pause, there is increased tone in the deep inner abdomen and in the pelvic floor. And when you go to the inhale, there's a slow release of that tone. It's not a sudden release, it's not a collapse. The next time you're on your inhale cycle, go ahead and stand up and go toe, heel, toe, heel until you come into horse stance, which is something like this. Horse stance being that as if you were riding a horse, not a very big horse apparently. So we're gonna practice Uddiyana Bandha. This is review for lots of you, but might be new for some of you. So there's an inhale, there's a complete exhale. At the end of that complete exhale, you've used these exhale muscles, you've squeezed the breath out. And then without inhaling, you're gonna completely relax the external, the superficial exhale muscles. So rectus, abdominis, obliques, and so on. We're gonna make a pretend inhale. And what's gonna happen inside is the diaphragm is gonna whisk a pretend inhale in. You'll feel the pelvic floor, the inner belly and the throat, all three bandhas will be active there. And then we have to recalibrate that pressure before we inhale, otherwise you'll be gasping for the in-breath. Okay, so come down to your horse stance, place your hands on your knees, straighten your arms. Let the torso hang down from the shoulders. You do have your hips slightly sitting back like this. And let's inhale smoothly. In your own timing, exhale completely. In your own timing, you're gonna hold the exhale out, make the pretend inhalation, and you'll do that in your own timing for then into the release.
And then you inhale smoothly. Once you release that, you can go to the next round when your body feels ready. Let's try to do it three times in total. Don't make yourself feel breathless at any point along the way. And tie it three times. Then you can take a wide stance and come down to Prasarata Padapanasana and invite your body to relax there. Now, when you come down to Prasarata Padapanasana, you might start noticing that there's a sense of um, spaciousness perhaps or a silence in the mind coming from Uddiyana Bandha. I also hope that your sense is the inhale is reaching the pelvic floor and the internal organs are at ease. Raise your hands up to your hips and rise up to standing. And then let's go heel toe, heel toe to center. And just come to mountain pose for a moment and see if you can feel into the possibility of santosha, like you're just standing in the present. And there can be a kind of all is well feeling in the present moment, particularly if you're here in yoga class right now. You're not directly in harm's way in Ukraine and you're not directly in a too cold or too hot place um, right now, just right now, can you sense all is well, consciousness is intact, grace or love are present. Meanwhile, the world goes on, as Mary Oliver said. Let's come to Surya Namaskar, please. You turn to the top of your mat or face to the east. This is the east for me. We're doing a couple things in Surya Namaskar that are also related to cleansing. So you, you might sense that as we're going through the practice. And if you haven't been here, a couple things might be uh, challenging. We'll see. So join your palms together. With the Ujjayi breath, inhale your hands down, reach wide and up, please tippy toe and look up. Exhale, come down to chair pose, touch your heels to the floor. Inhale, raise your heels in chair pose. Exhale, come down to a squat with the heels raised and the knees are up to the chest. And then inhale, Uttanasana, pour yourself down, root your heels, and exhale for a deeper bow towards your legs. Inhale, glide forward through your spine and your heart. Exhale, left toes straight back. Inhale to rise.
keeping your legs really stable from your heels, right heel to your right toes, left toes. You're gonna to keep the left heel lifted for right now. And then exhale, and as you glide forward, I'd like you to touch your left feet down and pick up your right heel. So you're gonna come into Anjane Asana with the heel of the right foot lifted, the right knee is higher, and then raise up through your heart and your arms. Heel is lifted so that your right knee is a little higher. Might feel the left hip flexors a bit more. And also as we come forward now, keep the right heel lifted and you're gonna reach over and perhaps you can fit your knee into your armpit. Raise the right knee up, raise the right heel up. And then slowly lower your right heel down. So you're gonna be working on the flexibility in your right ankle. A little bit of compression in the right ankle joint, right knee, right hip, means that circulation is being temporarily channeled in different places, but limited down your right leg. If you have your armpit over your knee, you're also limiting circulation down your arm at the moment. Okay, walk your hands back to your blocks. And as you inhale, straighten the back leg and come into your basic lunge. And then exhale, step backwards to plank pose and notice the temperature moving down your right leg. Inhale, raise your hips high, downward dog pose. And exhale, left foot forward and right foot back. Inhale, rise up to your crescent. Let's keep the legs stable. So right toes, left heel, left toes. And try to sense yourself there in the stability of the legs. So when you exhale, take the arms wide and on the way down, pick up your left heel and touch down your right knee smoothly. And then inhale, raise up. Increase the need for balance and focus. As you reach up, also look up. And then exhale and come forward over your left leg. See if you can place your left armpit in your left, over your left knee. Raise the left heel up so you're really even pressing the knee up into the armpit right there. And then begin lowering your left heel down. So you've got left ankle flexibility, left knee is closed, left hip is closed, a little bit of pressure in the left armpit. And then place your hands on your blocks, straighten your right leg, bring your left leg to the basic lunge. Inhale to plank pose. Notice the temperature moving down your left leg. And then reach high to downward facing dog pose. Okay, exhale, right foot forward, left foot forward, Uttanasana. Put the blocks aside. Inhale, rise up, upward hands pose. And exhale, hands to the heart. Okay. Inhale, raise up, tippy toe, look up, please. Exhale, chair pose, touch your heels down slowly, reach your hips back, sit in the chair pose. Inhale, raise your heels. Exhale, come down to your squat. Put the armpits over the knees. Raise the heels high. Okay, inhale, straighten the legs, root down through your heels, and exhale for a deeper bow in Uttanasana. 
Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, take the left toes back and touch your left knee down, raise your right heel. Inhale, rise up, Anjali Asana. Exhale, reach forward, try to keep the right heel lifted. Put your armpit over your knee. Lower the right heel down, stretch into your ankle and your calf. You place your hands by your right foot. Inhale back to plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Come onto your stomach and inhale to cobra pose. And exhale, roll down pranam. So bow your head for a moment. Inhale, roll up to cobra, bhujangasana. Exhale, glide the heart forward. Make the spine longer as you come down to pranam. And once more, inhale, roll up, bhujangasana. And exhale, pull the spine forward on the way down. So the belly gets longer. Curl your toes under. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Enjoy the inhalation. And then exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Raise your left heel. Anjane Asana. It is a balance pose. Exhale forward. Can you place your armpit over your knee? Lower your left heel down. Extra compression in the ankle. And then place your hands and inhale to plank pose. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra. Now exhale, Lion's Breath. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Lion's Breath. Inhale, Cobra. And down we go. Curl your toes under. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then exhale, right foot forward and left foot forward. Uttanasana. Rising up. And to the heart. Again, inhale, or Bahasvasana. In chair pose. Inhale, raise your heels. Exhale, come down to squat. Bring the armpits over the knees. Now, toe balance pose. So what you're going to do is raise the chest and the heart. Put your hands in Anjali Mudra. Put the knees forward so you have a lap. But your hips are not resting on your heels. They're closed, but not resting. Draw the lower belly in. And then reach the arms forward and return to the heels lifted in this squat. And now inhale, straighten the legs into the pose Uttanasana. And with the exhale, enjoy a deeper bow over your legs. Inhale the heart forward. 
Okay, this time exhale, take the left foot back and put the left inner heel down. Inhale, rise up, Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Warrior one, now keep the legs really stable, sweep the arms wide, come forward, interlace your fingers at the small of your back and glide the torso down. The right <clears throat> hip stable, so your right hip does not sashay to the side. You wanna keep it snug. We are influencing the lymph system and the upper inner groin. Also the brachial plexus, the shoulders, the arms, the circulation to the hands. Relax the weight of your head. And then as you next inhale, root down into your right heel, rise back up, Virabhadrasana one. Notice the temperature change in your right leg and in your arms. And then exhale, come down and step into plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Come onto your stomach and reach back to interlace the fingers. Inhale, rise up to Salambhasana. And exhale, lower down. Place your palms beneath your shoulders. Curl your toes under. Plank pose. Downward facing dog pose. Okay, exhale, left foot forward. Pivot the right heel to the floor. Rise up, Virabhadrasana one. Keep the back leg steady all the way to the inner heel. And then exhale, sweep the arms wide. Reach back to clasp your hands, keeping both legs stable. Even if you're wobbling, there can be an inner sense of stability or the effort for that stability. Relax the weight of the head. Keep the left hip snugged into center so it's not doing the hula. And then root down into your left hip. Rise up, Virabhadrasana one. And exhale, sweep the arms wide. Step down to plank pose, please. And then Chaturanga Dandasana. Come onto your stomach now. Take the right arm out to the side on the floor. Turn your head to your left and roll your hips and knees and feet over to the right. Roll the right shoulder down away from your ear. And the right shoulder should not feel like it's pushing a, a hole into the floor. And then exhale, roll back to center. Open the left arm out to the side. Turn your head to your right and roll your hips and knees and feet over to the left. Touch the left upper chest, left shoulder. And then roll back to center. Now touch the feet, the tops of the feet to the floor keeping the arms wide. When you next inhale, raise up to Salambhasana. And then exhale, place your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, rise up to seal pose. And then exhale, plank becomes downward dog pose. 
And exhale, right foot forward, left foot forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Samasitihi. Profoundly relax the pendulum of craving or aversion, future or past. And consider Santosha in the present. And you greet the present as it is with a fullness of contentment. Knowing that the present moment won't stay the same. And you have a relationship of contentment towards the present. Please release your arms, hands, and shoulders. Okay, I'd like us to practice another cleansing pose. And, and then we'll practice what's called a balancing or cooling pose. And sometimes in the cleansing poses, you're going to get the release of heat. And it's helpful to also know what kinds of poses or practices help to balance that heat and bring back this sort of coolness, because while we're saying, can we be content with whatever is, of course, we want to practice that. We also want to know how to bring about the quality of homeostasis in the body. And since most of us are not living in homeostasis, at least most of the time, we're living with some biochemical stress soup going on, even if it's just larger life events that are filtering into our compassionate heart. So we want to come into homeostasis. So this next cleansing pose is called Garudasana, the eagle pose. And then we'll do Rikshasana, tree pose, and see if that brings a quality of cooling. So sweep the arms wide. Wrap your right elbow over your left. Weave the hands around each other like a rope, like that. And then bend your knees. And wrap the left leg over the right. And wrap your left ankle behind your right ankle, unless you have a hip replacement, then don't do that. You can't anyway, the apparatus won't let you. For anybody for whom putting the foot behind the ankle is a hindrance, go ahead and put a block under your left foot if you'd like, or you can touch the tiptoe to the floor if you want, or you can practice holding it up to practice your balance also. Let's bring the elbows and the knees together. Ali doge namo nama Kali doge namo nama I know at least one of you wanted to sing that <laughs> in that moment. So sweep the arms wide, press into your feet, rise up. And then release the arms and stand in mountain pose. Sometimes I feel in this pose, it's like after eagle, it's like the heat coming off of the pavement in the summer. This heat is just dissipating from you. Excess pitta or out of balance pitta. Sweep the arms wide. Wrap the left elbow over the right or do the other side and bend your knees. Pick up the right leg and wrap it around. And we'll bring the elbows down to the knees. Focus your eyes and your breath, eagle pose. You can imagine the, the uh, purpose of the eyes. Good. 
Kali Doge Namo Nama Kali Doge Namo Nama We're going to root down and rise up. And then let the arms drift down slowly. Notice the heat dissipating and then rebalancing the fire in your body. Stay with the process of noticing. The heart rate, your body temperature. Your breath rate, it's all coming back towards balance or homeostasis. Standing on the left leg, bring your right foot up. You can place your right foot anywhere along the inseam of your left leg. It can be high up in the upper inner thigh like mine is, but it could also be lower down, except don't put pressure on the knee. Make the standing leg as firm as the lifted leg. Join your hands together. Smile at your efforts. Well, sweep the arms wide. Can you stay for a time here in the tree pose legs? And join your hands in this little meditation bowl position. Let's imagine as we practice this thing called contentment, like a meditation we're doing in tree pose. So we can become more resourced, more balanced. When we go out into the world, we won't have the petty grievances. Instead, we'll be able to see the larger dilemmas and be resourced enough to participate, to feel into solutions. But if we are filled with our petty grievances, as Femme Children calls them, it'll be hard to participate in the larger dilemmas. So bring that up into your heart now. And then please step down with your right foot. Stand on your right leg and bring the left leg up. And you can place it anywhere along the end seam. Make the standing leg strong. It is a source of stability. Of course, on the day that we're practicing Santosha, we're also practicing balance poses. So we may have an extra challenge of practicing contentment in the form of acceptance. But it is a good practice not to be disgruntled with yourself if you're wobbling or bobbling or stepping out and stepping back up. Keep your tree pose going and slowly lower the arms down 
to this little position. I like to think of it as a meditation bowl. We practice the contentment of not leaning into our petty annoyances. That up into your heart. You step down from the mountain pose. Namo Namo Gonna tear onto your mat, please. All the noise. So we'll place the chair on the mat and you're gonna need a couple of blankets, probably at least one to pad the chair and potentially another blanket to sit on. So the padding is because your forehead may end up there and then a blanket to sit on or two blankets if you would prefer that. The left leg under the chair. Turn your blanket or your seat a little bit on a diagonal so that what you might have is this leg maybe 90 degrees to this one and also to the chair so that you're gonna to need to rotate a little bit to come over in this position. And so rotate your inner body. So the pelvis and the right femur are stable. Rotate the inner body to your left. As you come forward towards Janusirsasana, place your forehead on the padded chair. You might reach your right hand under. In my case, I'm holding the, the bar of the chair back there between the two feet. Place the left hand on the yoga mat nearby and use your left hand to help you with a little bit of rotation of the torso to your left. If you have enough twist in the spine right now, you could pick up your head and turn it also to your left. Can be a cooling and calming pose. You may feel, of course, some wonderful stretching happening, but also your body right now is recognizing in a forward bend that we want to slow down the nervous system. Roll your right hand back, roll your head to center. Let's rise up and we're gonna change sides. So take the left foot in, rotate your blanket so that you can have the right leg under the chair and then the left knee 90 degrees. So to the extent possible, that means that you're gonna rotate your torso. Your, your hips are not now facing the chair because when you go 90 like this, the hips are facing 
at this um, diagonal. So rotate the inner belly, come forward. You might reach the left hand under to hold the back leg of the chair or the bar of the chair back there. choose to turn your head to your right. This is a slowing down pose to your body can do some like deeper washing of the organs here in this twist. You're in a squeeze cycle. But the squeeze is coming with a parasympathetic reset. It's a cleansing kind of squeeze. that back up to center. And what happens when you release the squeeze is that you go into the what we call the soaking cycle. So it's soaking and squeezing, rinsing and squeezing. I'd like you now to come onto your back with your shins up on the chair seat and with two blocks close by. And when you lie down like this, I go ahead and lie down so that you have this 90-90 so that you know that the lower back, you can easily bring it down to the floor. And then take one block behind the head. Put it on the medium setting. Take the second block and you're either gonna hold it in the flat setting or the medium setting. There might be a couple of you who need to hold it with the tall setting. Um, but I'd like you to hold so that when you go overhead, you're really reaching the fingers around the far edge of the block. And yet the shoulder blades are gonna pull down away from the head and your head is going to press back into the pressure that the blocks are making. This is one of the first headstands that I teach, getting a feeling of pressure on the top of the head and the benefit of the pressure. Now notice as you're doing this, if your lumbar spine is coming up off of the floor, and what you can do is put your feet on the front edge of the chair and bring the knees toward the chest. So we wanna have the flexibility in the thoracic spine that your lumbar spine does not come up off the floor to make this pose happen. You're also gonna need, let's say when we learn to go up to headstand and tomorrow there is a therapy clinic on this. Let me just say here, we're gonna need some abdominal strength to get up to headstand. So can you hug the knees to the chest right now without the feet on the chair? Can you keep the thoracic spine open and the knees are snug to the chest? And you're relaxed, you could sing. Kali Doge Namo Namo Kali Doge Namo Namo For example, you also can practice, are you somebody who could straighten the legs? And then you'll know that you have an easier ascent into a headstand. And if you can't straighten the legs, do not worry. There are other methods for getting up to a headstand. Or if you straighten the legs and they're all day vertical, like to the ceiling like this right now, that is gonna be a harder lift to a headstand, but there are remedies for how we can approach it. Okay, let's release the headstand. Put your feet back on the chair, put the blocks aside and come down to 
Shavasana. And notice what those sensations are at the crown of your skull right now. For the pineal gland. The master gland of the endocrine system. And tosha or contentment means we're resting right now, free from judgment. We are not sorting out the past or planning the future. We're practicing to the extent that we can a quality of acceptance, both for ourselves and all the details of the present moment. Observe your body coming back into homeostasis. The fluids of the body are being rebalanced. So is your fire. So deeply, deeply rest, no thinking or planning.
a deep rest to penetrate for one more minute and don't let the mind intrude. bringing with you this inner quality of contentment. We're going to roll the head side to side, wiggle the fingers, the toes, bring your knees towards your chest, roll to your side, return to a seat that we can use for meditation. For your meditation, sit in such a way as you can experience the full benefit of your practice. You've already dedicated more than an hour to be here. And so this dedication, now meditation is the most powerful part of the practice. Let the mind to be very still. You can soak in the practice of being present to the present.
still for one more minute together. Please raise your hands to your heart. And may our petty grievances be less compelling to us. May we be renewed enough to feel into the larger world. Santosha is not the practice of being content as if everything is okay and can now um, continue on as it is. It is a practice of inner contentment with ourselves, an inner feeling of okayness enough in the present so we can then participate in what life is asking of us. Thank you, everyone. Namaste.